Hello everyone, so you're here back with Cody and we are going to continue quilting our little custom quilted project using the OESD Design Collection Wonderless Quilting. And so our first part of the video, we did the border corners, which came out awesome. So now we're gonna wrap it up. We're gonna do some simple block designs, which will run through really quick, really easy, because that is the simplest form of quilting um, on the embroidery machine. And then we're gonna go and do some half square triangles with some set in triangle uh, quilting motif design. So let's start with something simple. And that would be our block here. So hopefully you can see that on the screen. So we are going to select a quilting motif. So with the OESD Wonderlust quilting, oh, I forgot the name of it, Wonderlust quilting, we are going to select a block design. We have the option of a hot air balloon, the mountains, which will match our mountains here. But let's spice it up a little bit. We've got some luggage, um, paper airplanes, the little camper, and the camera. So let's, we've got two squares, one up here and one at the bottom. So let's do two different things. Let's do the hot air balloon, kind of represent, you know, hot air ballooning through the mountains, which I did once and I will only do it once. We were in Mexico and we went for a sunrise hot air balloon first thing in the morning. It was chilly, it was early, and we went through the mountains in central Mexico. It was amazing, but one time thing. I was scared the entire time. So here we've got our cool hot air balloon um, quilting block motif, and we're gonna set it in here. So we are working on the 790 Pro. You can easily use a 770 Plus, a 590, um, a, 590 a 790 Plus. Um, so the feature we are gonna use for this is not a Pro specific. The only thing that's really Pro specific is this beautiful laser, which makes everything so much easier. Um, so we've got our design and we've got our block. So we're gonna come here and we're, we are gonna use pinpoint placement, that's the beauty of this. So we are gonna come here. So technically, I'm gonna backtrack and say we are going to um, use a pinpoint placement feature that is um, specific to the 790, just to so show all of those new 790 customers how this works. Um, but otherwise, if you were just a regular 790 plus, 770 plus, you would come here Oh, I just recently turned off the machine. So this is a quick little learning exercise because I get this phone call a lot. Whenever you get this message, it's telling you to remove the hoop. And that's because it's the first design we're doing for the day. And then hit the check mark. Do not remove the hoop and put it back on. You need to remove the hoop, press the check mark, the module will move. And sometimes you get a message telling you to put the hoop back on. Others, other times you may not. Um, but usually you'll get this message, then you can put the hoop on and the message will actually go away. So we've got our design. So you can select this motif here and you can select the top and the bottom and make it fit in that square. However, we are going to spice, change it up a little bit. Um, so we'll come to our pinpoint placement. We're gonna to come to this icon here, which is a new feature. And so this is the morph to fit. We are working with a perfect square. We've got a square design, so we do not want to morph it. That's if we're trying to fit this square design into like a diamond or a different shape. So we're going to come here so to make sure it maintains the shape. And so we're going to select each corner. So we can see here the, the laser is further down. We want to line that laser right into that corner. So we're going to stretch it into here. So it's right in the corner. We come down to the next one. There's no set button. You just move it and line it. So you move from one point to the next. So once you select and move all four points, it's now taken that design, put it directly in the center of the square and made it fit that square. So what we then wanna do as we've seen this in other videos, this really isn't anything new with the exception of that it's only on the 790 Pro, uh, but I've shown it in other videos. So now, if we stitch it right now, it's gonna stitch that design most likely really, really close to that seam. Too close for comfort because I did line it up with the exact seam in each corner. So we're gonna off-center just an eighth of an inch. So that's gonna pull that design and bring uh, make it an eighth, eighth of an inch smaller so it brings it off of 
all four edges an eighth of an inch, which is something to take note of when we go into um, these diamonds over here. So we're done. It's, it's so simple and that's all we need to do. So we'll come here. We want to make sure that we have the quilting icon selected. We'll bring up our bobbin thread. And we are working with isocord thread. It's a slightly darker than lavender purple. Um, isocord thread is such a wonderful thread to quilt with as, as well as hemp embroider with. Um, but you can quilt with just about any thread you like. So now we have finished this motif. I'll give you a closer up shot in a minute. Um, but so now, since we're dealing with a block design, so the star and the end point are at the same exact spot. This is something we did not see with the border corner. And what I love about working with the block designs is so right now, it started here. I pulled my bobbin thread, so I've got two tails here. Perfect. Now it stopped here. So what we want to do before we hit that check, before we hit the checkered flag, we're going to come, we're going to grab this tail. We're going to hit the checkered flag. And so now we have hold on to this tail. We can lower that needle, have it take one full stitch, and then we can pull. And now we are gaining access to our bobbin. So we see with this loop here, this is our bobbin thread and our top thread. So we are going to trim here. So you should have three individual strands. One is attached to your bobbin. The other one is your top thread and another one is attached to the back of the quilt. So when we remove the quilt, we'll just be left with two. And now they're all, but the first two and the last two are together, so I can actually tie those four together and then bury the thread all at once. It's perfect, that's why I love working with block designs. So that was super simple. So I'll take it off so you can see. It stitched out beautifully. Look how awesome. Absolutely love it. It's adorable. And the back looks just as pretty. So you don't see any threads or anything because we pulled them up to the top. All right, so that's as simple as simple can get when it comes to quilting. So here's something a little bit more complicated. Let's do a triangle. So here we have a half square triangle and it's a perfect square, so we're good. So I'm gonna show you a little trick. So we're going to put this in here and get it all lined up like we would anything else. So we're just making sure we're lining up the seams of the triangle. We're going to line up what we work, what, the area in which we're working with. So a uh, vertical seam and a horizontal seam. And make sure that all four sides of that square or those two triangles are perfectly lined up with a line. And then we'll attach our quilt to our medium clamp hoop, which is wonderful. Yes, we are waiting for a bigger one. Come on, Bernina. Okay, here we are. So what we want to do is pull up a whole new design. So we'll come here, go and select a new design. So we've got two, at least two that made it to my USB stick. We have the trees and looks like a star in the clouds. We're going to do the trees. I'm a nature person and the trees are a skull in my name. So we hit the trees and it matches the trees in our border corner. So we are going to stitch these trees in these triangles. So first things first, we are go going to want to orient the trees in the orientation that this triangle is going. So that means this point of that tree, we're going to want here. So we're going to rotate it. Unfortunately, we're probably not going to be able to rotate just in 90 degree increments. You can try. Yeah, so working 90 degrees just doesn't work. Um, so we've got 45 degree that way. So instead of doing math, which is not my forte, and figuring out the angle that's needed, some people will know right off the bat, that's not me, at least not at this point. Um, but sometimes we can allow the machine to play with it, or we can play with the machine. So let's get out of the um, rotation 
and let's do a let's try and work with the mirror image let's try a horizontal mirror image well looky there that guy's exactly what we needed so we know it's on a 45 and all we did was mirror image it and boop, that's what we got and that's exactly what we need so now we can play with it and see how we can get it to fit so let's go to our pinpoint placement. So we'll come here. We'll stick with this pinpoint placement, which is what we were working with doing the hot air balloon. So, and this works because we're dealing with triangles in a half square triangle situation. If we're dealing with like set in triangles where you only have one triangle and it's not within a square because it's doing something else maybe, this might not work. But for this case, this should work. So what we're gonna do is we're going to line up these four points with the four points in this triangle. Because it should set that triangle, because it's half of a square, it should set it nicely in this half of the square. So we'll have to play with it a little bit but it'll be quite interesting. So let's go and select our points. And so we'll just move our laser down to this corner. And move this one down and over. So it'll make it bigger as you see. So we'll move into this point. Now remember with all of my videos, I like to show Show you and teach you as much as I possibly can. So remember that in just a minute. Okay, so we've got our square in here. And so we lined up our square. So this half of the triangle should fit nicely in here. Now, one thing to remember is we need to check always check so let's check the bottom here that bottom corner so it's in a really good spot it's about an eighth of an inch off the edge perfect let's check this corner that one looks good too let's check this corner so that one's a little off it's almost directly on that seam so let's check this line so that is directly on the seam which is exactly what I expected because remember, we plotted out this square and this triangle is half of this square, which means that 45, that line is, should go directly down that seam, which is exactly what it's doing and it's exactly what I don't want. Because it's gonna be slightly off here and here, which is what I do want, like an eighth of an inch, remember? But I don't want it to stitch down that seam. I don't want to go beyond this orange and I don't want to be so close to the seam where it's now no longer an eighth of, like, so it's an eighth of an inch here, but not here. We want it even. So what we need to do now is not close out of the screen that I closed out actually. Um, of course. So here, so we should be able to do it. So we want to off center it an eighth of an inch. So this is the part where I said, I want to teach you as much as possible. So what we did, follow me here, what we did is we off-centered the design an eighth of an inch. So we have the design the center and we say, okay, bring it in from all four sides an eighth of an inch. So what it did, it brought it an eighth of an inch this way and an eighth of an inch this way. So basically it's just made it a little bit smaller. So, but what it's doing is it brought it up and it brought it over. Well, if we saw here, these points were pretty good. So now if I go and check, they're gonna be off even more, we're off like a quarter of an inch. That's too much. So these, so yeah, so we're about a quarter of an inch off, which is more than what we want. But we'll check this point. It's close, but it's smaller. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to bring this design down a smidge and over a smidge because it moved it up quite a bit and over quite a bit we need to move it down a hair and over a hair 
because it brought it into the center, we need to kind of move it down and over, move it away from the center. But because we're at this 45, we can't just move it down at this 45 degree angle. We have to move it down a little bit and over a little bit. So we are going to move it down, and it's really an unmeasurable amount, and then move it over. And you can check your points, use your stylus. So about an eighth, we're about an eighth, and about an eighth, perfect. And this line should be about an eighth inch away. Hopefully you follow that. If not, re-watch this part of the video because it's, I don't wanna say it's confusing, it's just different and there's a lot. But that's how we were easily able to get our triangle in here. Now, one thing to remember, let's save this. We talked about saving in part one, so what, but we haven't done it here. So what we did is we basically made the perfect angle, the perfect size of what we want. So before we go any further and potentially mess it up, let's go and save it. So we'll come here, here, let's save it on our machine, and here. So now we have this triangle that's the perfect size to do in all of our triangles. So we can go and stitch this one out. finished so now before we hit the checkered flag grab that tail checkered flag it comes right back to the end point which is also the start point bring that bob that needle down and back up pull that bobbin thread up give it a trim so you have three individual strands and you're good so now since we have this area this square the other triangle hoop too we might as well and go and stitch this same design but in the orange triangle. So let's see what we have to do. So did you see what we did? We didn't rotate, we didn't do anything. We just played with the mirror image and it gave us without any calculation that perfect angle. So we just mirror image both vertically and horizontally and now we have the tree triangle going in the direction we did we do here or that we need here. So now we just kind of need to move it. So it's at the right angle. It's just not it's not the right spot. So we could do something really simple. So right now I am at this point. Well, I'm at this point here, which is going to need to be in this corner here. So remember, we're all about an eighth of an inch off. So we can easily just move this laser point or your needle right by eighth of an inch from that corner. Let's go and check the point here. So it probably it's right where it needs to be, except let's move it over just a hair. And let's go and check this point. So it's too far down. So it looks pretty good. But if for whatever reason, this can happen because we've stitched this after we've already lined up our seam when we put our grid in, and it may be a little wonky, um, especially if you had a little bit of extra play in your fabric, so this section got pulled and it may be off. So if you really wanna check, and if it seems to be a little off, which I think mine actually is. So let's go and check this point one more time. Oops. So it's right where it needs to be here, but I come here and it's a little close to the seam. So we could rotate it a hair. And so this is why I said save your design before we stitch this one out. So we, our first one was at a nice 45 degree angle, but now we're gonna rotate this one. So this one's not really gonna be at that 45. So when we go and do other triangles throughout the quilt, we wanna kinda of go back to our original one that we know is at that nice 45 degree angle. And then so we always know we're kinda of dealing with that perfect size and that perfect angle triangle so we don't keep off centering and move it, keep moving uh, that design, our original design more and more. So let's, I wanna rotate this just a hair like one or two degrees. So 
that looks actually like too much. That one degree was probably perfect. So let's stitch her out and see what happens. Again, some of this really isn't an exact science. So each one can be a little bit different, just as long as you know how it's different and the few little tweaks you need to do to fix each one. And a lot of it, remember, it's fabric, so it shifts, it moves. Oh, that looks good. So that one little degree of rotation is all it really needed. Because what we don't want is we don't want this line that stitches to be really off, to be a quarter of an inch away from the seam here and an eighth of an inch away from the seam here. It'll be very noticeable. So it's finished. We grab that tail, hit the checkered flag, bring that needle down. Pull that bobbin thread up. We have three threads. We trim. Now we've got three individual tails and we're done. So this is what the look we're going for. Perfect. And so our back is nice and pretty as well. No threads because we brought them up to the front. So I'm going to go and do the rest of my triangles. I've got six more. I'll go do those and I'll show you what they look like. All right, so I got it all quilted. So we did a pantograph in the center and this design we actually made bigger to make sure it fit. And then we did another one that matched here to finish off what we did here and then all of our trees and our little half square triangles. But this is our finished product. So this is how it looks. This is how my quilts typically look when done on the embroidered machine um, after I'm done. So that I've got all these tails that I'll then go and tie them all off, just like I did in the border and the corners, and then bury them all within the quilt and trim off all the excess. But this is it. So all I have to do after this, aside from trimming and burying my threads, is trimming up the quilt, adding the binding, and then it's good to go. But you can see the back looks nice and pretty. No tails or anything, because they're all pulled to the front, with the exception of one or two. All right, that's it. So this was part two of quilting the quilt. Um, and again, what we did here is essentially what we did here. Just use a different, bigger design. All right, so if you enjoyed this part of the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, check out the merch down below, and stay tuned for the next video. And as always, happy sewing. <laughs>